Presenting the Contax 645. Many have spoken on this camera, often in hushed tones of reverence. When people talk about the Contax 645, many lofty terms get bandied about. Legendary, outstanding, highly coveted, bloody expensive. But does it really live up to the hype? Let's have a deeper dig into this camera and see what all the fuss is about. But before that, a message from our sponsor. Ah, oh, bugger. Ah, oh, yeah, we actually don't have a sponsor. We do all of this ourselves. So we're not going to try and sell you a VPN or get you to build a website with what's it space. Um, we'd just like you to like, subscribe and click on the links and do all of that lovely YouTube stuff. Ah, oh, bugger. And maybe uh, come to the Teespring store and try and grab some of our apparel and show your support to help us keep on making great videos. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, knackers. Yeah, so please come along and help. Released in 1999, when everything was way cooler, Contacts came very late to the medium format game. Well, this Contacts did. The old Contacts was a different matter, though it was also a different company. This is a Kyocera era Contacts, so in the same vein as the T3 and the Aria SLR. This camera came so late to the party that it only had six years of sales before it was discontinued in 2005. And this camera was already entering into a very well established and competitive marketplace where Pentax and Mamiya had ruled the roost for a very long time. So buying into a completely new system for a photographer was quite a difficult thing to do when there is already a solidly established system readily available to them. Not only that, but added to that, this camera came with a premium price point, making it very expensive and a bitter pill to swallow for a lot of photographers. But it came with something that had professionals mopping the sweat from their brows and getting a bit hot under the collar. That sweet, sweet Zeiss glass that everyone wants so much. Even if you consider it isn't really Zeiss glass, more Cusina Zeiss glass. But that is a whole other box of spiders that I don't fancy opening today. And it wasn't just that. The Contact 645 is a fantastically designed modular body system with all sorts of additional extras. Well designed, easy to use, feels good in the hand, intuitive. This is a really solid camera and uh, also just so happens to be the first autofocus SLR medium format camera, which is kind of a big deal. Setting itself up for some credentials for a legendary camera. So, Let's have a look at some of the features on this camera. Bear in mind that they may not be wow nowadays, but when this camera was released, the features really were a showstopper. In case you hadn't guessed, I mean, it is in the name, this is a 645, so it's six centimeters by 4.5 centimeter frame, which isn't as big as say the six by sevens, but it still gives you that nice medium format resolution. This camera is quite special, as with some other contacts, it has this very cool feature, the vacuum back, which holds the film much closer to the film plane, making for flatter film and for better quality negatives, apparently. Pretty cool though. It also has something which is going to wipe the floor with the competition, and that is a 32 second to 1 4,000th shutter on a medium format camera. That's absolutely mental. It means you can shoot basically pretty much wide open even on a bright day like this. The list of functions on this camera is quite exhaustive. So uh, we should probably get into some of them. It has got spot TTL metering and center weighted average metering. This camera has a single and continuous shooting mode with a 1.6 frames per second, which isn't blistering. But then again, considering nowadays film prices, you might not want to switch that one on. It has got multiple different exposure modes, it has shutter priority, aperture priority, bulb mode. It also has exposure compensation. And yes, 
autofocus, continuous and single, multiple exposure mode, which I will likely never ever use. It has, uh, oh yes, AE lock as well, so you can do that too. But it's also got something cool called the ABC mode, which teaches you English while you use the camera. <laughs> no, it's the automatic bracketing control mode. And what that does is basically controls the exposure during your bracketing to make sure that everything is perfectly aligned. And it's a very, very clever little bit of kit on it. It also has a dark slide film holder, which is really useful because these things are effectively impossible to replace. So you don't want to go losing that. So just stick it in the back of your film magazine, keep it safe and you are good to go. This camera is not by modern standards loaded, but by the standards of the day, absolutely loaded, which is amazing considering it's in such a small, compact package. This camera comes with a pretty famous piece of glass. It's the Planar 80 F2 Zeiss lens, and it is a bit of a legendary piece of glass. It's very popular amongst the cine crowd, and now the prices, because of that, are incredibly expensive, but then it has got fantastic resolution and rendering capabilities. In fact, all of the lenses for the system, there were nine in total, all had brilliant capabilities and now are all extremely expensive because they are still really sought after and for good reason. They're bloody good pieces of glass. It is plum blossom season in Japan now. It's an absolutely glorious day, so we should take this out and get some shots and sniff some plums. Sniff some plum blossom. You know what I mean. Let's go and take some pictures. In the real world, this camera is really easy and very enjoyable to use and produces stunning results. No, no small thanks to the glass, but also the camera itself. Is it worthy of legend status? Yes, I believe it is. I do believe this is a legendary camera. This is one of those contact works of art, one of those cameras where they pushed the technology and pushed it as far as they possibly could with no real regard for whether it would be saleable or inexpensive or anything like that and ultimately for contacts this this was a dead end but it produced this camera which is a remarkable piece of kit um, and one really truly worthy of the status of a legend as always you know the score it's pros and cons time so pros amazing design really wonderfully easy to use camera and produces amazing results. Cons, let's see, price, mm, oh yes, price, uh, price of the glass, and repairs are extremely difficult for these cameras now. Some pretty big caveats there. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the show. Please like, subscribe, and come to japancamerahunter.com and keep on shooting film.